What is up, everybody? And welcome back to the Serie A Audio Experience with IFTV. We're back with another podcast, and this time we got Gaetano. We got the whole squad over here. We changed some things up, so hopefully this one's better than the last one. We filmed, a, we filmed a nice Zoom podcast the other day. You guys liked it. We had a little problem with the cameras, but we fixed it this time. So you're going to be able to see everybody's beautiful face over here. And we finally got us all together. Even though we're all in quarantine, we yeah. seem uh, we're all busy. Social distancing, but the podcast still must but go But we're on. being safe. So uh, first off, Dad, how are you doing? We, nobody, nobody's heard from you. Everybody's been yeah. worried. For you're months. the only one that nobody's heard from. Well, you know, I, uh, I've been working. Uh, and since I work at the airport, you know, it's not easy to a lot of, a lot of people, uh, a lot of passengers, uh, even though there are not too many flights, uh, th there's still some people returning home. These are all people that are going home and that they were here visiting. So I've been very, very busy with, uh, with that, trying to get all the Italians back to Italy. Amazing. I, I want to see uh, your background over there. I see a little uh, oh, yeah. a special person. Give us a little tour. I have a, I have a special picture. If you could see it. Yeah, 19, we see it. 1978. Can you see it? Mm -hmm. Is that clear? Yeah, yeah, it's clear. All right. That's 1978 when I worked with Pelé at wow. the Pelé soccer wow. camp. That's very cool. You had, you, had more, you had more air back then. <laughs> <laughs> and it was... Uh, yeah, now and it was black. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what's one thing? What's one thing you could tell everybody about working with Pele? Since since you said it already that you worked with him. Um. Well, the the uh, the first time uh, that I met him, uh, the, the first time that I was going to meet him was uh, was the night before, and I couldn't sleep all night because I didn't know tomorrow I'm going to meet Pele. What am I going to say? Uh, I, I remember I was a little kid, 1970, woke up, I'm 13 years old, and, and I'm watching uh, the King, uh, the World Cup against Italy, and now um, I'm 21 years old, and I'm going to meet Pelé. What am I going to say the next day? I couldn't sleep all night. So we knew that he was coming in and in the afternoon, and I w I, we were going to go have lunch, and I was repeating all the things that I was going to say to him. But I figure it comes in the afternoon. I go to have lunch. I open the door, and here is Pele in front of me, and I have no. I, I am so you uh, got everything. nervous. Uh, I have no idea what to say. And I say, Pele, it's, it's such a pleasure to meet you. And he gives me a hug with both hands, something that you cannot do right now. But at that time, he gave me a big hug, and he said. Uh, in Portuguese, the pleasure is all mine. Wow. And um, so that, that was, was no Corona great. back then, I guess, right? That was no Corona back then, right? Gaetano, that's a legendary story, though. Wow, that's, just hearing that, that, that sounds incredible. Wow. For someone like Pele, arguably the best player that's to ever step happened. on a field. And so you had a chance to work with him, so that's... That's that's definitely a goal. I'm sure everyone would want to be in uh, your shoes for that one for sure. Yeah. <laughs> you uh, the the story that always stuck out to me. I remember you told me once. And I'll I'll just I'll summarize it real quick. You always told me that one time um he was about to head out. I don't know. I don't remember where he was going. Uh, but he had a flight to catch. And there was a, a line of people or a lot of people that wanted his autograph and wanted his picture. And um, his team was trying to get him rid. They're like, listen, you're playing. You're going to miss your flight. You got takeoff, this and that. And Pelé said, we're here because of all these people. He said, make them form a line. Get me a chair. Get me a table. And you said he missed his flight. And he stayed there and signed autographs and took pictures with everybody that was there. We had 300 kids. He made sure that he signed everyone's autograph. And um, and he missed his flight. Yeah, that's crazy. Wow. Anto, how are you doing? You've been. This is the this is the most quiet we've ever heard you at the start of a podcast. Literally. And listen, I don't want to jump uh, into somebody else, especially when you're talking about Pele. You know, jumping on uh, on uh, you know, it's not it's not a nice thing to do. So how are you? I'm still hanging in there. I'm still alive. You know, 
So uh, listen, uh, there's a lot to talk about this stuff here. And everybody's been talking about uh, they're coming back in June, in July. They're going to start in August. We're going to start in September. Guess what? Even if you guys start, I mean, if you guys have the Serie A, the English Premier, the basketball season, the baseball season, Formula One, you name it. Any sports in the world that is going gonna, is gonna, to, uh, you know, resume, per se, you know, this quote-unquote, it's going to be, it's going to be fanless. I'll tell you why. Because a lot of people, a lot of people, they are, they are afraid of crowds now. After 9-11, we were, we were going to the airport and, and they were checking us, our, the shoes, the belt, and, uh, and, uh, and just about everything. Now, now we are just uh, not even checking the temperature. People can trust, you know, what's going on around you. Now it's just, uh, oh, this guy here might look sick. Or this guy here might have something. So who the hell wants to take a chance to go to the stadium, to be sitting next to somebody, screaming and yelling and chanting, and, uh, you know, and eventually spewing uh, viruses out, and then taking a chance to come back home, and then you're not feeling well in a couple of days, and then you say, you see, look what I did. So... I think it's going to be a recurring thing uh, for, uh, for the next few years. I just hope I'm wrong. Did you think of this on your own? What? Did you think about this idea on your own? I think just about everybody's thinking about it. I mean, if but, you're not thinking, that means you've got no brain. <laughs> well, there was, <laughs> there was a famous guy. Um, I think his name is John Taffer, the dude from the oh, bar show. Talking about? He, he, he gave like a, a speech yeah. that kind of went viral. And he was just saying how the world as we know it uh, in the sports world is not going to be the same after this. Because almost exactly what you said to a T, he said, you think you're going to see stadiums filled with 80,000 people that are side to side? He said, you're not going to see it for a long time. So Maybe saying, not ever so again. So you're saying people are going to be scared and it's going to take some time so they can actually start gathering in large uh, numbers like P, that? you think that's going to happen? I mean, right now, I think definitely within the next couple of months, people are going to be hesitant to go to – stadiums uh you know in the u.s they're talking about not even having fans and i think that's the right thing to do uh, at this point in time we have to make sure that we keep certain you know we we keep the large masses away from each other let's hopefully the season can start and, and the different season starts back but you know we'll, we'll have to watch the games from our couch from uh, on tv uh in light of all this hopefully you know you know what antonio said is a projection that, you know, a lot of people have, have said that, you know, life after this is probably going to be different. We're definitely going to be more aware of viruses and what it can, what it can mean. You know, people are losing their lives. We know we, everyone is going to be touched by this. We personally know someone that has lost someone uh, very dear to them. So, I mean, this is, is serious and it's unfortunate. Um, but we have to make sure the right measures are taken moving forward. You know what, Peter? Let me just jump in on this one here. You just remind me something very important right now. Marco, I don't know if you mind about this. Uh, Rocco, Rocco, one of our followers and friends, he did a podcast with us. Uh, he recently lost his mom. And uh, when I heard the news, my stomach turned black. I mean, I, I was so angry. I, I couldn't just... I mean, how the hell is something like this can happen? Rocco is a young guy. You know what I'm talking about, right, Peter? Of course. So, uh, I, I mean, it's so freaking unjust. This whole, this whole thing it sounds so nasty. Why somebody's going to die about this? I mean, I, I, don't, I don't even know what to tell somebody. Like, uh, you know, Rocco is such a nice guy. And if he's a nice guy, I'm sure his parents are nice people too. So, uh, but aside from that, I mean, a life is too much. One life is too many. And now we've been hearing that we are... Uh, you know, the curve is coming, is coming to the peak and then we're going to be slowing down. There's still six, 700 people a day dying in New York or New York State. Not 100, 200, 10, 15, six or 700 people. And this is like the good news. Oh my goodness gracious. What the hell is going on with this town here? It's bad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think before uh, we go forward, uh, we'd like to... Uh... I want to cheer him up, Gatano. I want to cheer oh, him up. Well, we, we need to, uh, to mention to all the, uh, all the ones, uh, all the people that are listening to us, all our fans that are out there. You know, I'm sure that every one of us now knows somebody that tested positive. So our prayers go to 
all the, the people and all the, the ones that are listening to IFTV that uh, you recuperate as fast as possible. Our life has changed and our life will be changed for the future. So we need to learn how to live with this uh, invisible uh, uh, enemy. It's not that because uh, we are on a lockdown until April 29th and then after April 29th, it's gonna be over. It's not gonna be over, but what you have to be is you have to be smart uh, and you have to be aware uh, of the distance, uh, social distance, so washing your hands, uh, yeah. wearing a mask. So this is uh, for the uh, near future. For the, uh, for the far, for the long future, I see that um, once there is a vaccine, maybe in six months, uh, and there is a vaccine, then we can return, or there's gonna be a test I hear in the next, uh, next week, where in 10 minutes, you can determine whether you were, had the coronavirus or not. And if you did, now your, mm. uh, your immune system can combat the, 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 this coronavirus. So you're, you are safe to, to, be, to go out and go back to work. So, um, but our life, uh, I mean, yeah, if you didn't get home, the virus, Gatano, if you don't get the virus, you cannot go to work. So, you, you in, in other words, if you want to well, work, once, you uh, once you, get out and get it out and get it out of your system as soon as you can, right? Right. But once you have the vaccine, if we have the vaccine in six months, then people will, uh, you know, they, they will feel um, much better about it. But you still, uh, I think you have to, uh, are you going to shake hands? In a, you know, in the next few months, are you going to shake anybody's hand? Are you going to, um, you know, when somebody sneezes, uh, you have to be uh, aware of. You have to be aware of the, the um, environment around you, which in the past we didn't do it, but now you have to. I never knew that you had to wash your hands for twenty seconds. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Yeah. I never washed my hands a past uh, a few months and I've done in my life. I feel like I've been taking the skin off my, my, my hands. hands. They're, completely, they're completely dry. Going to the bowl. Like, yeah, I think I, I lost uh, <laughs> uh, 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 a couple of millimeters of my skin in my hands. But did, did you know that um, a lot of people, most people touch their face about I do. 20, yeah, I times, do. 20 times a minute? But I do it like this now. I just keep not, try not to put my hands. I just put my head, my, my wrists. I yeah, but if the, if the wrist is on your virus and then you touch there, what's the difference? Well, my son, at least my, I, I, you know, my, if my son sees me, he's going to kill me. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I, never, I never really touch my face, so that's one good thing. But also, life as we know it, too. Uh, obviously, this is all important, and we always start, we always start the podcast with this because uh, Antonio said it, too, on, on the podcast that you were on. Um, one life is, is too much to be lost, and, and that all of this is more important than anything else. But, you know, IFTV, we're also here for escapism. You know, we're, we're football fans. We want to talk. We want to argue. We want to debate. And I think that we use this more as a way for, and I saw in the comments of the last one, is people more to get away from all this because everybody's talking about it on the news and stuff. So one thing, just to shift the focus a little bit, all the teams, they decided to, um, to take a salary cut for the next months. Um, I think it's going to be between two and four months, somewhere around three months, a salary cut where Serie A, um, all the clubs agreed to do that. There's been a little bit of a debate amongst people yeah. saying that they should or that they shouldn't. Where, where do, Pete, where do you stand since you're, you're in the football business of this? By the way, it's one third of their salary they're reporting that, uh, that that's being slashed for the next couple of months. Well, uh, just to start, I think a lot of the, the worries – isn't necessarily for Serie A players. Serie A players are one of the the most paid players available. You know that that have a, a high salary, and, and losing one third of their salary is not going to be a drastic uh, problem for them. Uh, whereas maybe players in Serie B, Serie C, Serie D, um, you know they're not making much, and if you take away a third of their salary, it's it's going to be hard for them because they're they're just narrowly living or, or, you know, just making enough to, to make ends meet like everyone else. Uh, of course, they're lucky enough to play soccer and, and, and play football. Um, but still, they're not getting paid the crazy amount of money that you would, you would think. That being said, I know that they're, they're looking to give, they have a two month cut for every player. And that would be if uh, Serie A returns for this season to finish out the season. And then if there is no, or, or rather that the season ends right now, as it is, there will be a four month cut. And I think a lot of it has to do with um, 
you know, literally business one-on-one instead of, uh, I know in, in different uh, teams, Juventus, for, for example, they, they before Serie A actually came out with this pay cuts, they went on on their own and, and took a salary cut for their players and made sure that 100% of, of salaries for uh, people that are part of the team that don't necessarily play, but are whether they're the, you know, the, the managers, the, the hostesses and, and people working in the stadium made sure that they kept their salary. So it's just, it's trying to figure out how we can make ends meet because in the end, even the football world, the teams have bottom line and they have to be able to keep that bottom line and pay for certain things. Listen, I, I, have a, I have a question that I think there is a huge confusion about salary cuts, okay? When somebody, when, when the società cuts the salary of the player, but one half, one third, one quarter, whichever the case might be, what does that mean exactly? That Agnelli is not paying the full salary? And what happened with the salary that he's not paying to the player? Where does money go? Besides the pay for the people that they wash the locker room, the you know cleaning the stadiums and do all that stuff, those money should go to the tifosi because the tifosi they make this this whole thing happen. What happened with those money? What happened with the let's say Dybala makes I mean Conte because it's my favorite coach for example, he makes eleven million uh, dollar a a year. This guy here, you cut him three percent. It's like you take three and a half million away from this guy here. What happened with those three and a half million? Where those money goes? Well, Pete, do you know? The, I, uh, it's not necessarily that they're taking the money away. The problem is the, the teams don't have the money to pay because they're not getting their sponsorships. See, the, the reason why they have all this money is because not necessarily the money that you make in the stadium. Because that, okay, that's a, a, a strong revenue stream. But it's the TV deal. It's the sponsorship deal. Once there's no games being played, no one's going to sponsor. Pirelli is not going to sponsor Inter because they're not being seen on TV. It's part of the contract that when Inter plays, Pirelli pays. So, but at this point, how the hell are you wanting me to feel sorry for them? There are people that they're losing their job. They lost their job. They lost everything. They might not even get the job back. Those guys at some point were debating whether to go back on April, at the end of April or May or June. I think they should be taking more than what they've been cut from their salary. And just benefit the people that they are struggling makes ends meet. Deciding whether you know pay the, the TV uh, uh, subscription no. or put the food on the table. But I don't think any I don't think anyone's feeling sorry for the players. I think it's just a matter of they can't, were able to come to terms without having any real problems. And so you know they're they're going to be taking a pay cut. And like I said, it's not the city out players that I would be worried about. It's more so the Serie B, Serie C, right. Serie D team players that, you know, they, they're living. Yeah, because on the highs of everything, it seems like, you know, uh, they're making this sacrifice. You know, we should be, you know, uh, we should say, good job, guys. You're cutting yourself 30%. You're not cutting anything, technically, because those guys are there just for the money. You know, we forgot, we forgot that the last 10, 15 years, soccer has become just about business. This is not a game as they used to be anymore. Now we're discussing about those salaries. I'm telling you, they make so much money. Somebody like Neymar, somebody like uh, Cristiano Ronaldo, somebody like... Uh, I don't yeah, know. yeah, yeah. But Antonio, gotcha. you know, Antonio, you're looking at the opposite spectrum, brother. That's a very small percentage of players making that crazy yeah, amount of money. But in Serie A, a lot of people making an average... Serie A, of is, Serie, a, Serie a is one thing. But I'm, what I'm trying to say is that we're not worried so much about the Serie A players. It's the other players that... You know, they the have lower to figure league. it out. Yeah. Dad, you have an opinion on this? Oh, yeah. I don't know why he's been taking uh, such a long time to, to get to an agreement and why this is the union fighting so hard. If you're a player that makes a million, more than a million dollars, hey, you shouldn't, uh, right now, you could stay without getting paid for a few months. You're not going to, uh, there are a lot of people that have to put food in, on, on the table right now. There's people that the average, the, the average person makes between 50,000 and 100,000. That's what they make. You make a million dollars, you could stay a couple of months without salary. And like Peter said, I agree with Pete. Hey, take care of the guys that are in Serie B, Serie C or Serie D, that they are starving because now they're not making enough money. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know. I, I agree. You know, those guys that make millions of dollars, 
hey, they should have been the first one to, to uh, volunteer and say, listen, we, we could stay without a salary for a few months. Are you kidding me? You mm -hmm. cannot stay for two, three months without a salary when you make a million dollars or over? Come on. You know, I like that. Hey, Marco, Marco, listen to yeah. this. It's a big risk. I mean, I can see it. I mean, I, I, I hope I'm not this one here see having those dark visions. But the, the, the spectatory or the spectators, they will, they will be count in the future in terms of viewership, like people logging in to watch the game instead of just people uh, paying the tickets to get into the stands Absolutely. And, uh, and sitting around. Absolutely. Because, uh, Look what's going on right now. I just hope, look, that they found this vaccine and everybody with, the, you know, they get vaccinated and they, you know, they, they, they clear themselves up from being in the, uh, in the crowds and just bring this whole viewership back because you take away the experience of being on the stadium and then enjoying the game with another 100,000 people next to you. That makes uh, the experience uh, like unbelievable. But watching the same game on the, on the computer on, uh, in front of a big screen TV, I don't care what is your resolution, whether you have a 5G, 6G, 20G, 3Gs, anything you want, it's not the same, okay? It's like, you know, watching the Yankees playing a Yankee stadium is one thing. Then you watch them on the TV and you're hearing a bunch of people, just uh, a commentator just takes away from the experience of being over there and witnessing one-on-one -on -one what, you know, what's going on on the you know, the stadium. So, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. And it's going to be a factor. Like, like you said, you're, you're absolutely right. And that's where, what leads me to, and I know um, I'm trying to sympathize with the newspapers, but you know, we see Gazette that we see Corriere, they're all talking about um, the big money moves of the summer already. Yeah. And obviously we're going to have to talk about them because they're there. And I'm sure a lot of these newspapers are bored and they're writing a lot of articles that are probably not necessarily true, but also on the other side, and Pete, you're an agent, just, just to get your two cents on this. I feel like we're not going to start seeing we, – we kept saying that the money that was spent on players was ridiculous, like $90 million for Coutinho, $250 million for Neymar, that it was a bubble about the burst. And I could be wrong, but there's a part of me that feels like we're not going to be seeing these kind of $100, $200, $300 million moves anymore. But how could you? Pete, there's, what there's do you think? enough money for the – yeah, no, definitely. Right. definitely. Well, right now, no one knows what the transfer season is actually going to look like um, because – First off, we don't know when it's going to start, when it's going to end. Uh, with the season might be playing do, throughout the summer, it looks like FIFA just approved yesterday or today that uh, anybody that has a, the contract expiring in June will be prolonged till the end of the season. So if the season ends in July, that contract will last until the July date. Um, that being said, uh, Galliani, who, who right now is head of Monza with uh, Berlusconi's group, uh, he said that it might be a time that uh, all of soccer actually changes and looks more like the, the American sports model where you're going to have more player trading. Uh, for example, if Juventus, and I'm not saying this, this is just something that was talked about, but uh, Pogba in Manchester United maybe makes a switch to Juventus. Juventus, in return, instead of spending major money, they would be uh, trading Bernardeschi, Douglas Costa, and, and so on and so forth. I'll take so that deal, by the way. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I mean, it, it, it works out. So you might see more player trading. Then in the same time, if things get back to normal sooner rather than later and, and sponsorships uh, still maintain a, a certain level, then you might be able to see, you know, the price tag and, and, and the possibility of, of teams spending money. But in the same time, I think the market, just for what you said, you, you're not going to see those big-time numbers anymore. And hopefully – it, it, on the way down, it'll, it'll create a normal or it'll normalize the market a little bit because no one should be worth $200 million. Exactly. Um, exactly. You know, so. I agree. I agree with that 100%. Yeah. I always felt yeah. something was going to happen to stop it, and this might be it. Marco, yeah. listen to me. I can see Mino Raiola in the next six months losing a lot of weight. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> he wants a pizzeria, so I don't know. Maybe he'll eat all the surplus over there. He'll be fine. Oh, that's why. Or he used yeah. to, at least. And I don't Holland know. or something, right? Oh, wow. Listen, yeah. Dad, we got – um. I know, like like I said, we, saw, we spoke about a lot of serious things, but we, we have to address some of, some of the rumors. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I, already, I already heard Antonio going nuts on the other podcast <laughs> about Icardi potentially to Milan. So before, oh, wow. before we get um, Antonio and Peter to fight over that one, because it would be beautiful. Dad, what, what do you think? Not saying that, you know, it's true, but what, what would you think about potentially uh, a guy like Icardi and they're saying Spalletti to Milan? 
Oh God, not him. <laughs> Dad. Uh, uh, I, from what I uh, I read, uh, Icardi is going to leave uh, uh, Paris. I don't think it's working out for him over there. And probably like, he loves Milano and Wanda with Tiki Taki over there. Hmm. She probably um, would like to return to Milano. Hey, it could be a, a marriage made in uh, heaven. Yeah, man. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Is Antonio part of that marriage? Oh. Uh, with, with, with the devil, though, in the middle. Oh, boy. I'll <laughs> tell you. Yo, it would be unbelievable. I, I, I mean, I wonder if, if, this, if this really wound up... Uh, you know, becoming a reality. I'm going to keep pinching myself because this is going to be the move of the century. But, I, you. but wow. I'm talking, is it worth it if, if, if Icardi comes and Spalletti comes, who is not your favorite? Oh, my God. Please, don't even name that guy. Don't, 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 don't ruin my day, please. <laughs> but would you accept it? Would you accept no, it? Both no, of them have to go. Oh, no, no. That guy doesn't belong in the, in, uh, in the bench, Spalletti. Come on, give me a break. But the his question... Actually, listen, the guy is actually happy collecting his money. Hinter is still paying dearly for just a... But Anto, Anto, his question was a little bit different. He's saying, um, to have Icardi, who's a player, would you accept having a coach like Spalletti? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh, my God. That's rough, man. I can't take that guy. You know what? As long as they put a mouthpiece or they, just, or they sit him over there and they chain him on the bench, because I can't... Stay, his body language is really s stupid, to say the least. Peter. But for Riccardi, for Riccardi, I, I might have to make a sacrifice. Not because I like him. I might have to just put up with it and just hope he gets fired within the, the first uh, two, three months. Peter, as an Inter fan, um, you know, Icardi was your guy. He, was, uh, he, he embodied everything that Inter was. Obviously, things have changed. But I think, uh, obviously, a lot of Inter fans do not want him to go to, to Juventus. How does it feel about potentially seeing Icardi going to, AC, uh, to, going to Milan? Well, I mean, it's, you know, Inter fans, I'm sure the, the moment that he steps foot uh, in a Milan jer jersey, they're going to make sure that he hears uh, the Inter fans. And I think right now, a lot of the Inter fans, they don't like him. So it doesn't make a difference if, if he goes to Juve, to Milan. Uh, the Inter fans don't have a favorable view uh, regarding him and Wanda, for sure. Oh, uh, God. Listen that being said no, listen to this. <laughs> you're going to be crying, Pete. I'm telling you. I can just see your face right hold, now. Hold on. I'm telling you, you're going to be the worst. You're going to be the most listen. unhappy person because you're going to see it. You're going to actually totally disregard watching your stupid Inter team. And you're going to wind, wind up watching how many goalie card is going to score for AC Milan and regret that move. Like a, It's like Babe Ruth listen. coming from, uh, from Boston going to the Yankees. That's what it's going to happen. Antonio. And Ant Antonio, would, it wouldn't be the first time that an Inter player goes to wear the Milan shirt. Uh, Christian Vieri, who was a you know top goal scorer for Inter for such a long time, went to play for Milan one year. Uh, Seedorf, Pirlo, uh, you know Pirlo. So I mean, you name it. We, there's been a lot of there's been a lot Cassano. of Cassano. Inter no Cassano. Did, Cassano went the other way. I know, uh, but, but that then said, came back. It wouldn't make it. It wouldn't make a difference. Dad, I got a question for you. Since you're, you're usually the, the most rational, rational and you also don't have a horse in this race, um, obviously we know the qualities of Icardi. Um, and despite what Antonio says, we also know the baggage that Icardi brings. To a team like Milan, that is probably mentally unstable, I think would be fair to say at the moment. Do you think it makes sense for Milan to get Icardi? Good question. Um, Thank you. It, de it depends on who's... Uh, I mean, who I have no idea who's running Milan right now. Do you know who's running Milan? Is, is Maldini still there? He's yeah, still there. Still there. Now. Listen, uh, if Maldini is running the show, Icardi's got no chance to go to... Uh, Why? Maldini knows how to deal with Vandanara. What are you talking about? It? Uh, he, will make, he will get a side deal with Vanda. He's not a Milan player. He's not a Mil Milan style of player, class player. But if uh, I, the way I see it, I think they want uh, Maldini out too. So at that point, uh, um, probably, yeah, he will have a chance. Wow. 
Uh, it's an interesting one. And I think, I think that Milan should probably spend the funds in, in other places. I understand, I understand like the, the, the fascination with it. And to me, Icardi is one of my favorite strikers for what he brings onto the pitch. Now, Pete, we, 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 we dug a little dagger in you. I, I know you said that Inter fans don't care, but I know it, it hurts a little bit, but you might be, um, be crying with the Jersey of, uh, uh, blue and red, uh, a little messy that they're talking about. What do you think about these rumors of Messi to Inter with Lautaro going the other way? Well, now those are tears of joy, if I yeah. have to say. I mean, La- <laughs> La- you know, Lautaro is obviously the younger player. He's got more upside in that sense. But Messi, if Messi comes over to Inter, that that would be a dream for all Inter fans. I mean, that guy is is up there with the the top players to ever play. So someone that can, of his magnitude, that wears the black and blue for the city of Milan, the, the only team of Milan, that would be, that would be great. Pete, you said you were dreaming. Keep dreaming, Pete, because it's going to happen, okay? That guy you think is going to leave Barcelona to come and play with a bunch of losers over there and Conte on the bench telling him what to do? He's going to tell him, okay, just go left, go right. You know what he's going to tell to Conte? Don't, don't make me say it because my wife is on the living room over here listening because otherwise uh, I will ever just say it anyway. Antonio is actually uh, – Peter, first of all, do you believe – do you think that it's possible? Listen, anything in this world is possible. Yeah, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> is it likely? I'm not sure. Well, but also, you- when, when Juventus signed Ronaldo, everybody was thinking that it was never going to happen. It also seemed extremely far-fetched. So, Pete, if, if you do get Messi, you're going to dye your, your beard blonde? Yeah, you got to do something Like crazy. what Messi Come did on. once? No, he's going to sure. grow his hair. He's going to grow his hair. I'll grow my hair too. <laughs> <laughs> but I would actually, I would like it. I, I would love it. I would love it to see Ronaldo versus Messi again. I mean, I don't think it's going to happen. Sure. I never think it's going to happen. But I also would, would pay to watch what Antonio said. I can only imagine watching Messi play under Conte. This guy's going to have him as a left wing back running up and down the, the, yeah. the sides. Conte's going to have to change a few yeah. tactics. Dad, he actually comes. Dad, where would Messi fit at Inter under Conte? Well, Messi, uh, he does not have a position. When you have a Messi, you say, uh, just go on the field and go wherever you want to go. So th- that's what he does with Barcelona. He goes left, he goes right, he goes middle, he goes up, he goes down. I mean, everybody else has to adjust to him. Uh, he will not adjust to, to the other players. I mean, there's only one player in the world uh, uh, at the level of uh, Messi. I mean, he's, he's from... Uh, he is from another planet. So, um, yeah, you just uh, say go on the field and uh, do what you do best. But does that sound like Conte? Well, at this point, uh, I, don't, I think even Conte, when you have a talent like Messi, I think even Conte would have to agree that uh, you cannot tell him where to go. You don't tell Messi where to go. Exactly. That's fair. I agree. I agree 100%. Wait, didn't Conte, what did Conte do with the Juve legend that when he went there? Even no. though uh, that he sat him down, uh, Krasic, was it? He, he's not a Juve legend. He oh, was, he was a legend. decent player. Wait, who, Krasic and, and Messi are two different. No, no. Was it Krasic? Who was it? Krasic, Juve, Krasic was the guy that he, that he, he was the best guy for the year before. But, oh, okay, okay. But That's what Krasic I mean. is... Okay. Uh, yeah, I know. I did say different levels. Uh, but I'm Bernad- just saying. I'd rather Bernadeschi over Krasic. But Anto, Jeez. so they're saying um, Ibrahimovic, with everything that's happening, is most likely not going to stay because Boban is gone. Maldini's got one foot out and the other foot on a banana peel, as my good friend Antonio would say. Um, so what do you think about Ibrahimovic uh, potentially leaving? Are you sad? Listen, Ibrahimovic, he, he was always uh, this, uh, this uh, maybe uh, six months to eventually have a one-year extension. So uh, if the guy doesn't see, uh, you know, a uh, serious move uh, from the Societa, he's not going to you know, uh, stay over there. But on the other hand, I, I have a good feeling that he's going to stay. Because who's going to be paying him, Ravimovic, the money that AC Milan is paying him and still playing at, in the Serie A? Just give me one other team. Another, maybe Napoli can pay, can pay Ibrahimovic. They're yeah. saying Napoli. They're saying Napoli, Inter, and Bologna are linked to Inter. him if he does leave Milan. Inter and Bologna. No, no. That guy is not going to Bologna, number one. Yeah, Mihalovic Inter is there. I can Inter, see them going. They have a great relationship. Me. Listen to me, Mike. Bologna, it's like, a, it's like a, you know, the, the, the under market. There is, there is a market that's the under market. <laughs> Inter, this guy here, he will never, ever put up with Conte because he's going to tell Conte to go somewhere if he's starting to, uh, you know, to do it. You know, if you're starting to tell him, I want you to come back, I want you to do this, I want you to do that, go left, go right, move up and down. He's going to take the remote control. He's going to try to control Ibrahimovic. So I know Ibrahimovic is what he's going to tell him. 
So the only place I can see it, it's under Napoli, under Gattuso, because I think they play together. And, uh, um, and uh, Milan is going to stay at AC Milan uh, for the next year. And yeah. Gonna, forget about what the paper says. Just listen to me, Mike. I know okay. uh, this, the paper is the paper and the, the, the reality is reality. Okay, I'll listen to you for the next sources for sure. Thank you. Here, guys, uh, I'm going to get to some questions uh, to, to finish up. There was a quote from Del Piero that I just wanted to hear your reaction to. It's, it's not that important, but I, we, we saw it and we liked it. Um, Del Piero said, uh, I'm, I'm living in America now, so sometimes I'm asked um, to explain how, what football means to Italians and to Italy. And Del Piero says, I respond, when a baby is born, the first thing that you tell them is the team they support, and then you can name the baby. <laughs> Yeah, that's about right. It's <laughs> <laughs> a good quote, right? When okay. you, I, want, I wanted to get a reaction of it. You know, you and Gaetano, you both grew up in Italy. It's as uh, serious as he says? Oh. oh, yeah. That's the main thing, man. The first thing that you get, the first time that you put your step out of your house, you have to pick up your team and then fight against the, your, the, the, your, your opponent. Immediately. Immediately. Because once you're, you're the, the heights of your mother, they get off from uh, from you the first time. You see, you see, you put a couple a couple piece of stone on uh, on the asphalt on the street, another two stones on the other side. You make that uh, you know the, the the size of a net, and you starting to kick the ball around until until you drop dead six or seven hours a day. That's what we did. Wow, Dad, what's your perspective? You know, when you grow up there, it's part of the culture. Uh, it becomes on, you know, on Sunday, uh, if I didn't go to church, Nonna would, uh, would beat me up. I had to go to church on a Sunday. <laughs> well, then after church, it would be soccer. So that's, you know, it, it's at that level where it becomes a part of, of you. And that's what you discuss during the week uh, on Monday morning, that's why you discuss what your team did, and that's and then you look for the next game that is coming up, uh, and you have ten different newspapers, ten different newspapers in Italy. They only talk about soccer, football. That's all they talk about. They don't talk about so. It, it is um, it is part of the uh, the culture and growing up. Didn't you have a story once that you, um, I don't know if I made this up or I heard it from somebody else or if it was you, did you have a problem with your shoes that you had like church shoes that you used to play with? Did I have what? Did you have like church shoes that you used to have, but then you use them to play soccer? No, we, we used to, I used to play uh, soccer with whatever shoes I had. I didn't have soccer shoes, so we didn't have football shoes, we, whatever we had. And they all had a hole in the front and underneath. And, uh, you know, I used to get in trouble with that because uh, I was not supposed to play soccer with, uh, with the shoes that I yeah. used to school. That was it. That was it. Anto, you got the same story? Oh, my God. My mother used to beat the living shit out of me all the time. She used to buy those shoes, man, with those thick, with those thick rubber at the bottom, thinking that they're gonna be, they're gonna last him for a little while. The second that I wore the shoes, I was already jumping up and down on the street, on the asphalt over there, on the dirt, on the gravel. So sure enough, the shoes, <laughs> within a week, they will be wearing out. And my mother she says, oh my God, look how much money I spent. She really used to just get so angry at me and, uh, you know, back then, don't forget, guys, now you got the shin guards, you got the, you know, the uniforms, you got, uh, you know, all of those gadgets. Back then, there was nothing, my friend, nothing, nothing. Wow. It was just you, the ball, bleeding knees every day because you fall on the, on the asphalt. There was no, uh, you know, the, the, the Red Cross kit over there, so you can just... Uh, you know what? Nothing bleeding until you really go back home, and then you actually, actually, you try to wash yourself before you go back home because uh, if your parents they see you're uh, you bleeding from your elbow, from your knees, you get more they get more uh, uh, <laughs> you know spanking on top of it. So uh, oh god, it's the pain, the pain over just uh, you know that you have for the from the bruise, and then the pain that uh, your mother or your father they they having to, it's you know. You know, I gotta say though, on uh, to uh, just to say something about nice about my dad. My dad never, never, never uh, scolded me that I, I was playing too much soccer. He only wanted to know whether I did win or I did lose. 
and it, it was not it was not very difficult to find out. He just just look at me. If I was happy, he would not even ask me. But if I was mad, and then it, the only question he would say, let, let me guess, you lost today, did you? And that made me so angry that uh, you know I developed a kind of a winning mentality. I'm not a good. Uh, I don't lose. Uh, you know, I don't have the. I'm not a gracious person when uh, when I lose. I gotta tell you. <laughs> Any, I like, I like these stories. Any, any other come to mind, Antonio or, or dad, anything that comes to mind about this? Um, uh, yeah, I mean, we didn't have a, we didn't have a soccer ball in order to have a soccer ball. We had to put 25 cents each and wait until you got that 25 cents. And oh, then yeah. I go to the store and, and try to get uh, the cheapest uh, football uh, that you could get. And, and the, the, the thing is that when we played in the street, if the ball went in somebody's balcony, okay. that ball was lost. <laughs> and then if somebody, if the ball hit somebody a window, the, the old lady used to come with water and out of the balcony, here came a bucket yeah. full of water while we were playing. And it, I mean, it was. And what about the brooms running after us with the brooms and all the stuff? Get Forget a, about get it. They were wet from us. Listen. Uh, they were listen. good times. That's Back funny. Then, Back That's then, funny. listen to this. Back then, there were two, Gaetano can just uh, attest to this. There were two major brands of soccer balls, I mean soccer, the, the, the most affordable one, because the, the real yeah. soccer ball was the una palla di cuoio, means with the real leather. If you hit a ball with, the leather, with your head with the leather, your head will be, your brain will become brain dead at a, at a very young age. <laughs> and then, there was the Super Santos, listen to me, there was yeah. the Super Santos, which was almost an orange ball, and the Super Taylor, like uh, with the black and white the Juventus uh, type of, uh, you know, uh, color. Never a ball, a ball that resembled inter, uh, inter uh, colors, but it was either the black and white or the orange and red, which, which was the AC Milan type. So it's either Juventus wow. or AC Milan. <laughs> uh, that's, that's funny. I like that. I like, I like these stories. Um, one last thing before we move on to one of the other good things, good things about this whole situation is um, the amount of like throwback quotes and uh, throwback stories that we're getting out of this. And one of them, which I'm sure neither of you guys saw, Lippi did a long interview and they, they asked Lippi how he chose Grosso as a final penalty kick taker. They said, listen, it's kind of weird that you chose Grosso as a, the taker. And he said, Grosso thought the same thing. He said, and as he was choosing who was going to take the penalties, he already had four players that were going to take the first four. He said, those guys were the best ones. They weren't chosen. He said, I needed to pick somebody else. So I started thinking um, Grosso against Australia, he got the penalty. Against Germany, he scored last minute. So he said it must be fate that this guy is, the, is supposed to be last for the penalty kick. And he said when he told Grosso, Grosso couldn't believe it. He said he looked back at him and said that there's no way that he was talking about him. Hmm. Funny um, little story. Wow, that's a nice story. I, I didn't know that. That's a nice story. I know. I can only imagine what Grosso was, uh, oh, was thinking during that. Okay. <laughs> what? I'm just saying, imagine a coach says you're going to take the final penalty kick for your country and he'll, he's going to live in, in, uh, in uh, what do you call it, Italy's history forever now just because of that last kick. We got a question from Phil Di Benedetto, and he says, um, can you guys name two players that you think should leave your team and the, and the replacements for those players? Anybody have anything in mind? One person want to take this, Pete? I know you got something in your mind. I'm trying to think right now, but uh, hold on. I put Messi. you on the spot. What happened? You got Messi on your mind. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, listen, I think maybe players, uh, we definitely need a left back, right back. So I would say maybe Asamoah would, would go take off his salary like that. And maybe, uh, you know, somebody in the middle, I think Vecino would probably be able to, to sell for a good amount of money because of, he still has value, but I feel like we need more quality in the midfield instead of the, just the muscle. Okay. Fair enough. Ne Pull back Neymar, Neymar to Roma and Pogba <laughs> to Juventus. I like the Pogba to Juventus, and I'll, I'll add uh, Tonali on that one too. Oh, wow. Mm, 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 mm. Anto, we got a question for you. Jason Cavadi says, how much would it cost Antonio to, to make him a Juventus fan? Oh my God! You, 
you have to just uh, rub uh, most of the banks from United <laughs> States and, <laughs> and Europe to make me a Juventus fan. Over my dead body, I will become a Juventus fan. Are you kidding me? Marco, no. wasn't, he, wasn't he going for Juventus uh, before this all started? Take it easy, old man. <laughs> I was not going for Juventus. I said, I would rather see Juventus winning than have Inter enjoying to win anything. <laughs> That's going I, for you. I would stick my I would stick my neck out saying, "Hey, listen, I would rather as much as I hate Juventus, I would rather Juventus to take it, but never Inter because for for us anybody by Inter is a win." Yeah, because the ones that always hit you over the head, you know, you rather have them oh. not win. All right. Uh, we got a question from Salismander. He says, moving the Euros back one year, is that an advantage for Italy or is it a disadvantage for Italy? It's a disadvantage. Why? I'll tell you why. Because uh, right now we have one of the most, uh, uh, one of the strongest team. I think uh, Mancini, Mancini assemble a spectacular team. We have the best midfielders. We have the best defenders. And we have even um, some decent uh, you know, uh, strikers too. And, uh, you know, we, we have it. You know, we are, we are risking, if we play the Euro now, we are risking to win the whole thing. I don't see anybody challenging uh, uh, the Italian national team right now. No, I Anto, I think it's a, I actually think it's an advantage. Mancini's done amazing in such a short amount of time. An extra year would give so much. Plus, a uh, key player like Zaniolo that we've talked about uh, is gonna, probably going to be back from injury and going to be playing. So I feel like there's going to be all positives for, for that Zuri if it does get, uh, when it does get pushed, for Pete? sure. Yeah, no, I agree with Mike. It's an advantage. One being that Zaniolo uh, comes back and could be healthy for the next year. Or a lot of the younger players are going to have another year under their belt at, at playing at a higher level. And then also the, the big question mark is who's going to be Italy's number nine? Uh, Immobile has been great this year scoring goals, but we tend to see him when, when he wears the Italy jersey he kind of fades away or becomes a different Immobile. Maybe, uh, you know, Antonio Immobile. Yeah, but, okay. uh, <laughs> maybe Peter Immobile. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that being said, maybe Moise Keane, Moise Keane can, can come through or maybe even Balotelli, you know, who knows? About Cutrone, about Cutrone, that would be nice. Cutrone, yeah, I agree. Hey, by the way, I enjoyed the interview with Cutrone. That was nice. Uh, but uh, Marco, you should have said something that I, I'm one of his biggest fans. Why did you, you didn't say that? You didn't watch the whole thing yet. Oh, I didn't watch the whole thing. I guess you're right. We, we, had, we had to tell him uh, off camera, Uma Uma. Yeah, exactly. Oh, we yeah, all, yeah, off camera. I'm in yeah. New York also. Dad, so when he comes to the studio, we'll all see him. What do you think, Dad? Advantage or disadvantage? Oh, I, I think it's an advantage uh, because, like Mike said, uh, you give Zaniolo more time to, uh, you know, to be ready, and also the team. Um, uh, you know, they haven't played a lot of games now, uh, so it will give us more time to play together, play some more games, and and, and be a better team for next year. I agree. We have a young team, so I think that it's more young. time. Yeah, Pete. Only one thing that I would say is uh, the question mark with Kellini, because Kellini is not getting any younger. So unless another uh, defender comes through within the next year, sure. um, it could potentially hurt the, the Italian back line. We got, a, we, got a, we got a good one here uh, from Massimo Carpino. Anto, we'll start with you. I, I mean, I shouldn't have said Anto, we'll start with you. But, yeah, we'll start with you. Um, all-time favorite coach. All-time. All-time. Hmm. Italian or, or anybody? Anybody. You could do anybody. Oh. Does anybody have an answer now? Saki. Saki. Okay, that's what I figured. There used to be a, a coach uh, that um, he coached um, Roma and he coached Brescia, Mazzone. And um, Baggio used to love him. Uh, he, uh, he loved Baggio like a son. And they, they really um, uh, did, did some, uh, some nice things together. So I remember uh, him one time, they criticized him. Uh, and he went uh, underneath, uh, underneath the curva, and with his hand, he was going, ah, because he, they won the game. Lidom was another one, uh, uh, a maestro. Uh, he coached also Roma, and he coached uh, uh, Milan. Another excellent uh, coach. 
I never heard, I never heard of him. Pete, who's yours? I think I know. Uh, you you want to say it? <laughs> the great this, uh, Jose Mourinho. The special one, Jose Mourinho. The special one? The special one, that's right. The, the one that won the, tri the, tri 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 the in Italy, the only team to win <laughs> the, the triplete. Tri he was the one yeah. that brought Inter back to Champions League glory after so many years. So, I mean, Jose Mourinho is, is top. Top. For, for me, it's Lippi just because of what, what he did in 2006. It's uh, always going to be, I know he was the, the, the gel, I think, to, to put that all together. And even when we spoke to Cannavaro, he credited Lippi as the guy that always believed in them and, and got them going. So for me, it's got to be Lippi. I mean, I haven't really been watching for the years, but if I had a pick, you know, I watch, wasn't watching like uh, as long as you guys been. But based on like uh, the stats or whatever, I'd have to agree with Peter. I'd have to go with Mourinho just because Tripleta is one of the hardest things to win. And Inter's the only team that's done in Italy. So that goes to show how difficult it is. Hey, listen to Flipper. Next week, he's going to pick up somebody else. If somebody asked that question, watch. <laughs> Did you see the video I sent you, Anto, yeah, of, of Mike? That. I saw that. What do you think? Yeah, I'll tell you. If I open a fast food, uh, a fast food restaurant, Mike, you're going to be on the... On the burger, uh, on the bar, on the grill. You're good flipping everything, Mike. You but, Anto, I wore the body jersey just for you. I thought about you. I was like, yeah. I'm going to make sure yeah. I wear this. <laughs> we, we got – this one's going to spark a debate, and we're going to need a response to this. Open to your interpretation. Totti or Del Piero, choose one. Totti, hands down. Give me a, give me a sentence why. Uh – Totti was not just a, a midfielder and regista. He was everything. He was a striker, midfielder. He, was a, he, took, he took the team in one end and, uh, and all the team followed him. Del Piero did his job extremely well. And uh, he, were, his, he played his position at the very best. But Totti was not just a position. He was uh, the, the, the heart of Roma. You got that? Yeah, we got it. Pete? I have to agree with Antonio. Totti, I think for me, was just such a, a legend. Not to take anything away from Del Piero. Del Piero had the signature free kick and his style was was unbelievable. Um, but Totti, I mean, the guy, whether it be through power, through pace, through technical ability, uh, the Kukai, I still remember versus Inter, where he, where he pretty much embarrassed Toldo with the Kukai, you know, uh, not necessarily the Kukai, but the, the, what was he I don't know, the, chip. the lob, the, the, chip, lob. Yeah. the chip from like half field was amazing. And then also the, the epic Kukayo and the penalty take. So he was just such a, you know, bad, badass, right, you would say? <laughs> <laughs> Dan? Well, I'm a little bit partial with um, Del Piero because we became friends. And uh, uh, so I, I'm a little bit partial for that. But also because Del Piero... If you're looking for uh, the number 10 that dribbles three, four guys and then uh, puts the ball in the net like uh, Baggio used to do or like Pelé used to do, uh, I never really saw Totti do that. Totti had a great shot. Um, he, he had the creativity. He had vision. He had... Um, but Del Piero he had more fantasy. Uh, I see uh, Del Piero as a more fantasy where, you know, you can dribble two, three guys in the area and then score the goal. But it's very close. Both, both of them very, very close. For, for me, obviously, a lot of people know. Um, I think, number one, Totti is probably the, the better player uh, technically and, uh, and technique-wise. I think the skill that that guy had was, was absolutely un unbelievable. For me, it would, it would be Del Piero, um, of course, because – Growing up, he was obviously my idol, and more so for, for just the skill was the professional behind Del Piero that I admired. I always loved a person that was not, I'm not saying that Totti's not loyal, but I'm, I'm saying like a person that was um, professionalism in its, in its essence. There was always um, a class about him and a leadership, and I always remember um, when the team was doing bad or when the team was going down, he was the first one to put his neck out and take the blame. And that was something that always sit with me. And I remember even when players would mess up, he was just the guy that got his team going. Um, and it was like the player that I like to be. So for me, it was Del Piero. That's fair. Mike, uh, if you had to choose I, one. I mean, I heard both. Like I said, I haven't really watched you guys, but I heard both the cases. I always like uh, Totti just because how loyal he was and how – what a footprint he left in Roma and stuff like that. And I always felt like I had a soft spot. Del Piero, too, he'd he done so much. 
But uh, they're both legends. If I had to pick one, probably Totti, just because I actually watched him play. Del Piero, I never, I never saw him play, unfortunately. Guys, last question. Last question. It comes from Max Kroom. And, guys, you're not allowed to not answer this. Oh, boy. You're not allowed to not oh, boy. answer. Make sure your Wi-Fi is good, guys. You understand? I don't crazy. want Antonio, no, no bad answer. Peter, no bad answer. If you were not a fan of the team that you are, which club would you support? Am I going to answer this or not? <laughs> Me? I'll tell you. Don't say body. No, I'll take Atalanta. Okay. Yeah. That's fair. I guess you don't really have to explain yourself. Yeah, I know. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Peter? Napoli. Why? Well, my mom is from, from there, and uh, I think the passion and the history, I mean, you had Diego Maradona play for the team, and just this, the, the whole stadium itself, when, when Napoli plays, everyone's there three hours before. So this, that's what it means for, for Napoli and Napolitani. Uh, you know, soccer and, and Napoli calcio is something that you can't, you can't really understand. For, for my dad and, uh, and Mike, I don't really know how you guys are going to answer this question. Uh, I mean, I'll go first. I always like, uh, I always love the Southern mentality because just because it reminds me a lot of Greece and Napoli comes from the Greek word. The Greeks won Napoli. They pretty much. They oh, sell. boy. Every, every <laughs> Greek word. Oh, so a Greek. lot of these Southern teams. Hey, if you guys got my big fat Greek wedding, even your name, Marco, it comes from the Greek. Dude, okay. Anto, Anto, the other day, yesterday, um, something, I don't remember what happened. It, like, there was like a stain, and it wasn't on glass. And Michael yeah. goes, go grab the Windex. I said, what the hell? You don't clean this up with Windex? He's like, yeah, yeah I'm sure Windex would do yeah, that. Windex would fix it. <laughs> it was a sticker, and uh, I know Windex has alcohol in it, so it'll help scrub it away. And that's uh, all we have in the studio. That, any, any, any way you can answer this question? Well, all the ones, uh, all the kids that we grew up in the South, we all had two teams. Of course, one of the teams was either Inter, Milan, or Juventus. And then the other one was Palermo because we were, uh, you know, we were from, uh, from there. From, we were very close to Palermo. So those were the, the uh, that would be my other team. And, this would... um, in a few years, I'll be back in Serie A. Yeah. yeah, hopefully. The, this will be music to Antonio's ears. But um, if I had to choose now, I would definitely pick um, an Atalanta. But I'm just saying, when I was growing up, I, uh, I was close to, uh, to this team right over here, to AC Milan, because I really loved, uh, I loved Kaká. I loved Kaká a lot. Wow. As a player, you pick Juventus? Um, you know what? Actually, the, real, the truth is that the Juventus club in Brooklyn was always there. Was, it was a place that we went to every Sunday. It was like tradition. And, uh, and Del Piero. So it was, those, it was the mix of those two things. You mean this guy? Yeah, there we go. Oh, <laughs> nice. But yeah, Milan, I always loved Milan because of Kaká and, and Maldini and Gattuso and Pirlo. They, they were guys that I loved. And I still love them, but I was never a real fan. But if there was one other team, it probably would have been Milan. Listen, I know in your heart you're an AC Milan fan. You're just trying to please your father because your father... Uh... You know, he got you uh, to take the picture with Del Piero and company over there. But uh, you just wish you had all of the achievement that AC Milan had That's instead cool. of Juventus. I do. And the biggest yeah. achievement is having you as a fan. And I wish yeah. I could have had you as a Juventus fan. Oh, yeah. Good luck with that. Oh, by the way, Pete, that was a, I have a question for you. My wife, she keeps uh, asking me. Pete, your mother speaks fluent Italian, does she? Yeah. Okay. So uh, I, I told my wife, I said, listen, by the way, Peter's mom is from... Uh, uh, What's the name of the town over there? Monte di Progida. Monte di Progida. Honey, do you hear that? Okay, so Peter's mom speaks perfect Napoletano, okay? And Italian too, I guess, right, Pete? Yes. So, okay, so um, that's it, Pete. That's nothing to do with soccer. We <laughs> 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 just texted him this. Well, why yeah. talk to you on the phone? Uh, you know. Hey, uh, you know, since we started, you know, guys, if we're going to finish, let's finish the, the right way because... Uh, Okay. You know, again, again, uh, Sabino, Sabino, and Rocco. They are they are some of our, one of some of the best friends that we have. Big followers and uh, and nice people in general. The nicest guy that you want to be around. And uh, Rocco, this is again for you. We want you. Uh, you know, I know it's hard and uh, it's not easy to be on the other side of the table. I I know what you're going through. So it's just uh, you know just uh, be tough, okay? And uh, you know, knowing that we are all behind you, uh, it's gonna probably. Uh, 
you know, you can call us, you can do anything you want. We're just available, uh, anything you, you want to ask us. So if, if we can do anything, just let us know. Okay, Rocco. So um, until then, uh, guys, uh, what do you want to say? You just read I, this podcast. I have uh, two last things. Yeah. Uh, one last thing, uh, I would like to, uh, to thank IFTV for all the money that you raised for oh, the Italian Red Cross. Uh, for the for the ones that are watching and they don't know, uh, the uh, Marco and and uh, Mike uh, they made a GoFund uh, and uh, they raised uh, almost fifteen thousand dollars or somewhere close to that, uh, and they sent it to the Italian Red Cross. So that was uh, a job well done. Great guy, uh, great job, guys, great, great job. Um, so uh, Gatano, why don't you finish up saying uh, to to rate the podcast? He yeah, got one more thing. There's one more thing. Oh. I got one more thing is never, never give up. You're right. You're right. Exactly. Fino, fino alla fine, right? There we go. You see, you what brings us around all the time is Juventus. Why are you getting excited, Anto? That's not a Juventus stuff. That's not a Juventus stuff. <laughs> what the hell Juventus? So uh, are we at the end, guys? Yeah, yeah, right then. If anybody else had anything to say, to Peter, in. Anto, if you have anything to say, you can say it. Yeah, just, uh, you know, the usual. Just uh, keep washing your hands. Don't touch your face like I'm yam right now. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing uh, that. What else? Uh, just, uh, uh, just hanging there because it's not easy being home. Believe me, I'm like caged. I'm caged like a, like a dog. I'm caged. I, I've been told to do... Uh, you know, what to do uh, from every, every corner. So uh, I, I, I'm trying to, to behave. And I'm um, spending a lot of time watching TV, uh, listening to bad news and switching to movies and uh, trying to keep my, uh, you know, my mind off. But if you guys are still studying and you're studying online, keep studying hard because this, this is the time that for you to uh, don't, don't relax too much because then, uh, you know, slacking off with the books is not good either. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And I think, I think you said it well that, uh, you know, obviously the, the situation sucks and it's going to suck if you're, uh, if you take it with a positive mentality or with a negative, they say that, uh, Isaac Newton, when he was, when he developed, um, the theory of gravity, it was actually a time where they were stuck, uh, for some kind of plague or, or something that he was stuck inside. So there's a lot of things that you could, you could enjoy if you're with family, uh, I'm sure this is a time with, for a lot of people, they're speaking to their family more than ever, whether it's on Zoom or whether it's in person. So uh, try to find any positive that you can and uh, keep your mind occupied. And if you need to message any of us, we're always here. Yep, you said it well. Yeah, I think we should do a little bit more of this since uh, most of, um, of, you know, we are home a lot yeah. of the time. Listen, when you guys tell us, for us, this is, this is very easy, easy to, to do, as long as it's easy for we you guys. We can do one every week, or whenever you guys are available the you same tell time, us. we can do it like that. As people ask questions, and people love hearing from us, so it's great. It's a win-win right. for everyone. Okay. But, yeah. Okay, so guys, Forza Milan, as always, okay? <laughs> okay, guys, we'll right, see guys. you next week, then. We'll try to arrange a time. Thanks for tuning in, and stay safe, social distance, wash your hands, and Forza Verona. Ciao, Ciao. guys. Uh, there we go. Uh, Hi. What did he say? <laughs> he said, "Where's Verona?" There we go.